right, so here we are with the um, backpack. You can see I've already um, painted the blue parts and these lower metallic parts. Um, it's really just the same as we did on the uh, model before. So we have these large areas here left. Uh, we discussed actually quite a bit over uh, what color we paint the topper vent here. Um, I uh, <laughs> Most of the times I paint Space Marines, I just painted it metallic. And uh, that's also what we're uh, going to do here. You, you, you. Know, you know yeah, yeah. Jack, Jack, wa Jack wanted to to uh, <laughs> really go for uh, the blue, and he was quite like shocked that I'm not going for it. He's like, what? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that's quite nice to have a little um, change in material here as well. So um, we will use the same uh, base tone, the dark metallic tone that we've mixed for the rivets. So it's. Um, black, um, stick it on scale green and uh, lead belcher and we will just um, put an even coat of that dark silver metallic color over the metal parts. It's really important that you um, keep the dark lines here in the inside of the, the vents and also the inside of that middle element there. Okay, and here for the round element, we would also try to, to keep the, the dark line uh, in between the, the different elements here. So yeah, you can see we definitely need two layers of uh, that paint here on, on these elements to get a really nice even finish. Um, I think I will just show it on the one side here and do the other one off cam. <coughs> um, we've, um, in this video we've uh, mainly used uh, layers and glazes to achieve um, our blending results. Um, here for the metallics I think I would like to uh, show a little of the uh, loaded brush because it's quite nice also for, for metallics. And if you're interested in, in that technique uh, you can see me uh, using that technique in a lot of our other videos. So, um, but as with the, the black you did earlier, yeah, even though you used the loaded brush, you can still use the same techniques that you used in the previous metallic areas and, and on the previous blue areas, yeah. So, I want one strong reflex here. So, I have um, the dark metal color in the back of the brush and the chrome on the tip, and here because you can use the side of the brush, you can. Just do a transition like that with only um, one brush stroke and also for the other side. And when you do that other side, I've just noticed you actually twist the brush and then place it back down because you've mm -hmm. taken so, off the, the, the place of the chrome yeah. on one side. Yeah, exactly. Um, and if you're careful and delicate in the way you place, you shouldn't um, mix that that chrome too much on the tip for you to be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah, and as the chrome is a little bit thicker than the other paint, um, that really helps to make it stay just on one side. Here for the, the inside, we'll just uh, also use the chrome on the tip to, to get a strong highlight here on the, on the edge. Okay, and um, just with a bit of um, black, there's a glaze here to, to the sides, and also here in the shadow areas. OK, 
everything. And from now on, it's it's really a lot of small loaded brushes. Um, again, loading up the brush with the chrome in the tip and the metal base color for the highlight here on that small tube. You really want to put that on the top area? Oh wow. Just pull that up a little. <laughs> Sorry, that's really cool that you did it on that small area. Yeah, especially uh, with with a strong color like the chrome, this really uh, makes makes it look like real metallics because you have that sharp, uh, precise highlight. Now you're keeping it quite simple for this project, but if you wanted to maybe take this further, you could possibly take some some inks and glaze them into the shadows. Or yeah, if you want to, to to get like a richer metallics, especially on on larger armor parts, it's very good to work in with with inks or also with other colors mm -hmm. to get a little variety in the in, in the tones that are reflected. And I think always a combination of um, blue tones and warm tones is quite good because you have that sky reflection, earth reflection, something like that is very nice to have. I was about to say, especially if you're doing a display piece, you want to take note of the surroundings that yeah. are around the miniature and you would have colors that were similar to those from the reflection of the light. Yeah, right. Anyway. So, um, just put some base color here in the, in the brush. Um, thinner than before, I'm just um, putting it here. Uh, to the top. And I'll directly into a loaded brush. We'll also try to get a round reflex here. If we will first soften it to one side and to the other. And usually metallic pigments stay wet a little bit longer. So you can push them around a little bit longer than normal paint on the on the surface that allows you to get like a very nice round reflex in in one go. And to soften out to the sides, we will just uh, also glaze over with our, our base tone. To matten also the, the shadows, we just um, add a thin glaze of, of black. Okay, just clean that off here on the to the upper edge. You have to imagine how the, the backpack is placed behind the Space Marine. So um, it's quite nice because the, the top reflex here is not really um, too distracting for for the the Marine. But when you have it from the back, you will see the, the full impact of the, the metallics. Um, same here, just with a bit of chrome, just hitting the, the edges. On a small element like that, it's not really uh, necessary to do any any blending works. So you can just hit it with the side of the brush. Okay, I just had to remix some base color for um, the loaded brush here on the on the top and. We need a little bit more paint for, for that. So make sure you have enough paint in the brush to to do the load brush over the whole surface. And I want to have a strong reflex here on the, on the top. 
The same from the other village. Okay, yeah, I still want to increase that a little bit, so I'm just, but I don't want to ruin the the transition that I already have because I, I like that quite, but just um, just want to push it a little bit further. So I'm just using a, a clean brush and just some chrome on the tip. It's quite nice to see. Again, a bit of black uh, the shadow area. You can see now it's a lot less reflective and that way you can can also control with metallics a lot how how you uh, how prominent your lights look because uh, if the shadows are just not reflecting that much light uh, it makes it a lot easier to read mm. we still have to add uh, like little reflexes the chrome on these little edges here. Okay, for the top here, um, it's, um, it's a bit similar than, than the main reflex here, but um, we actually would need like a, a small top reflex here on these, also along the middle, and just a tiny here. We'll first place this here to see how it, how it works, and if we need really need the one on the top. This here is quite important because. Um, it will give you um, the the helmet of the space marine a very nice separation. Uh, I think I would I would still like to add like a the small reflex here on, on top of these and place in a bit of um, shadow color on top there. So again, the uh, brush just with water and a bit of chrome on the tip. The uh, shadows I'm painting here are not li not like really uh, supposed to be there. You would have like one highlight uh, running over the whole thing, but just to to get a nice uh, separation there, I'm just adding a bit of a bit of shadow. I think that's uh, it so far to get the uh, the metallics, the larger metallic surfaces covered. Um, I will just finish that off cam, um, and then we um, glue the backpack in place and see if we want to add some glazes of tank brown maybe in the in the shadows. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. So the um, the second round element on the backpack is done and it's glued in place. Um, Jack mentioned that uh, there are definitely some scratches missing on the on the metallic parts, and he is so right about it. So we will just uh, mix a nice little color for some scratches. 
from armor brown and some black. And just add a few scratches. Yeah, it's a little hard to see because the metallics are picking up so much light here from the from the studio uh, lamps, but I think you can still see the the gloss difference. And um, we'll just use a tiny bit of chrome to to create little highlights. These little scratches are also quite nice actually too, if you uh, didn't really clean uh, the, the top part nice or you cut it a little bit they, or like, damaged the surface a little bit uh, with while the, um, with your preparation work, this is really good to actually hide those. Okay, and um, I think just a little bit, uh, a little thin glaze of uh, the armor brown it is quite nice to to enrich it that metallics a little bit like the very same like we did here on the on the on the front piece so I'm just putting it in the shadows Something that is not really uh, visible at first sight, but uh, it's definitely something. It also helps to to pull together the uh, the silver and the gold metallics because we use the same color in in both elements. Okay, so just going just a little bit here over the shadows. But yeah, I think um, that concludes the uh, the backpack, and next chapter would be um, the base.